Okay. So the last video was all about making this second frame in my stage. And that second frame is... And what's nice about the stage is you can just turn off and on your layers and you'll see how the animation's starting. And then I can get a sense if I think it's moving too fast or not, right? And honestly, I actually think those clouds are probably moving a little too fast. And I do like how the body's starting to move, right? But that's a, a pretty big, big change. The one thing I didn't do is I didn't add in a zoom. So this shows all the complexity. This is a separate element. This is a separate element. The cloud is a separate element. The stars are a separate element. And then the zoom is a separate element, right? So I got rid of this one. Or actually, maybe I won't. I'll, I'll keep it. Oh, no, I'll get rid of it. <laughs> and I'll, I'll rethink how quickly I want to zoom. I don't want to zoom right away. I want to take maybe four frames in between these two before I'm zoomed in. So what I'm going to do to assist the zoom is on a blank layer, I'm going to fill the entire thing with white just to get a white shape, right? And then with that, I am going to hit Command T and I'm going to hold down Shift and Option and just move in a little bit and hit Return. And then I'm going to use that to set my guides. So this is called uh, setting stops for your zoom. And then I'm going to hit Command T again, move in a little bit with that white square, holding down Shift and Option so it always goes towards the middle. So I have even camera movement and I'm going to set my guides again. Now it's okay if the guides aren't like perfectly every eighth of an inch. It just matters that they seem fairly smooth in their movement, right? Just like if you were zooming a camera by hand. And this is the same thing if we were panning across or if we were doing like a handheld effect. We could move this square. I could even put in some camera jitter. But always framing with a perfect square, which is why I filled it with white so that I could transform it. And now I'm going to zoom in a little bit faster and set the guides. I think I do it about every other semester. I'll include zooms or pans. And then I give myself a break the next semester. <laughs> because it's kind of technical, but it shows you how you have to think about animation. Okay, and then my last one before I get to my, my final. Ah. Set my last guide there. Okay. So now I can actually delete that white square. And now you see I have all these stops showing me how I'm going to get from out here to in there for the zooms. So I'm going to now critique this frame that I did, right? And I realized that my cloud was moving too fast, so I'm going to push it back a little bit. I think the stars moved well. And I liked the movement of the coral and the creature. Right. So now I go to my top visible layer. And I'm going to use my selection tool. Well, first I'm going to merge everything. So I'm going to say layer merge visible, holding down option. Then I'm going to use my selection tool and not select all, but instead select out the first stop of my zoom, and it will match to the guides, and then hit Command C. Then go to my stage and paste it in. And what you'll see is now I've zoomed in a little bit. So how do I actually make that work on the stage? I put my guides back, 
so that it knows where to stop. And I have to then grow that frame. And it's not a hard thing to do. You just hit Command T, you hold down Shift and Option, and you, you lock it to the guides. So now I not only have movement, I have the beginning of a zoom. All right. Hit Command S, save that stage. Now I go back here, I hit Command D, and I delete that. And I remember that I'm one stop in. Now I start animating again. And stretch stuff. I can duplicate the coral. And this time I'm just going to do a simple warp. I don't need to always do puppet warp, right? Just to shift it back and forth a little to sway. And then my creature, I'm going to puppet warp, but this time not quite as much. So edit puppet warp. Anchor it here, 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 and just move it slightly more forward. This is how I make my creature kind of walk. Oh, shoot. I made a big mistake there. I didn't duplicate it first, right? So I have to duplicate Command J and then do all of the puppet warping. Otherwise, I lose being able to go back to that original pose. So your assets is all about building more assets. So duplicate before you make a change. Unless it's just something as simple as a cloud moving. I move the head down a little bit. Careful not to distort it too much. Move the foot a little bit, move this foot a little bit. It's like he's moving. Move the back a little bit forward. There. And then I can see that difference. Okay. And then the cloud in the background, just teeniest shift. And then the star is just the teeniest rotate. And now I'm ready to go to my top layer and say, uh, oh, maybe I want to play with the opacity of the overlay a little. There we go. And then I simply say, uh, layer, merge visible while holding down option. And then I go to my next stop. So three in to get the zoom. And then I hit Command C to copy it. Then I move to my stage and I hit Command V to paste it in. And then I hit Command T to show the zoom. And this is what I have so far. I mean, Command S to save. Okay, for my next frame, I first have to deselect and get rid of that merged frame. I'm going to play with the opacity of the overlay. And I'm going to stretch the texture a little bit, the water a little bit under the feet. And I'm going to play with the coral by duplicating and warping. And I'm going to duplicate the creature and puppet warp them some more. And I need to, I'm, I'm moving like a professional animator about 24 frames per second, and that's just gonna take too long, right? So I need to make some kind of bigger, bigger moves. So now with my puppet warp, I'm gonna really reach the head forward. So I'm just going to anchor the feet and then really stretch the head forward like that. And that's it. That's a big movement. And at the same time, I want to start opening this creature's mouth. 
So how can I do that? A really simple way is to do some internal compositing and just copy the mouth from that layer, duplicate with Command J, and then rotate it open. Let me turn off the curl for a minute so I can kind of see and then make this mouth work. I'm going to call it my mouth layer. And I can even just paint it if I want. Kind of what the inside of the mouth will be. Let's pick a pink color. I'm going to steal right from my creature here. Paint a tongue, paint a gum line, maybe even paint some teeth. <laughs> maybe dodge and burn it a little bit. I'm not even using my stylus, I'm just using the mouse. Because this is just screen res resolution, this is going to go by in a fraction of a second. You know. There we go. Merge it together. Now I've got a mouth. That mouth can move up and down, especially if I move it behind my creature, right? So I'm going to turn that mouth asset on, turn my last coral on. Now I just move the cloud. And I pivot the stars. And I'm going on to now the fourth stop in my zoom. So I go to my overlay layer and take its opacity down. And say a layer, merge visible, hold down option. Use my selection and go to the fourth stop. So that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hold down shift to keep it a square. One, two. Copy it and paste it. And then transform it larger to get the zoom. So that was a pretty big movement. But he's going to start eating now. All right. So at this point, I deselect, I delete that merge layer. can play with the opacity of the overlay again. And the coral now is going to start to get affected, right? So I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to transform it. And it's going to get kind of tugged at because my creature is going to close its mouth. I'll rotate the mouth a little bit, 
and then move it behind a duplicate of my creature. 